and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm digging deeper into the recent anime series Fractal. A lot of folks didn't like Fractal, and I don't quite know why. Um, I found it to be a very impressive show. So let's dig into some of the themes of Fractal. And the first and probably most obvious is that of man's relationship to technology. Uh, there's this strong debate throughout the course of the series as to whether man should be dependent on technology or not. Um, and I appreciated the fact that this remains a dialogue throughout the course of the series. Some folks feel very passionately on one side or the other of that debate, and uh, we get to see the pluses and minuses of that over the course of the series. And it's also about connection and relationship, and you know, does technology drive us away from each other or not? Um, that's certainly not as strong of a theme here as it is in, say, Serial Experiments Lane, which um, tackles similar themes. Uh, in, in here, it's more of a, a minor note to the series that technology can be a glittering distraction. Uh, it can be so, so, so completely consuming that it distracts us from um, actual human relationships and, and connections. Uh, it's not that uh, technology is inherently evil or wrong, just that it does have these properties that it tends to be um, addictive in certain ways. Now before I go any further, I do want to clear up uh, some plot bits from the series. Um, there are some plot points that I think some folks may have missed that I want to explain as best I understood them. Um, and that is basically how Fractal all got set up. So to be clear, um, Fractal was based on the mind of a young girl uh, whose father sexually abused her uh, when she was uh, a, a child. And so when Fractal needed to be rebooted with this, you know, the mind of this girl, they tried cloning her, but they cloned younger versions of her before the abuse occurred, so that it wasn't the correct version of her. Um, then finally this priest realized what happened, and so he cloned uh, Frin and then did the same thing to her that her father had done, um, thus making her kind of the, the correct mental map for the rebooting of Fractal. Uh, that's why uh, Frin gets so freaked out when uh, uh, sexual things happen to her. Um, it's why she referred to her father like, um, I should never refuse anything my father says, or nobody ever refuses anything father says. Um, um, and, and it's why the priest is so creepy with her. That's what was going on. Yeah, it's icky. And they do a, a fantastic job of referencing those things very subtly, so you might have missed some of those, those bits. It took me a while thinking about it to really realize all this stuff. All right, let's talk about some of the memorable moments of Fractal. Uh, and for me, the first one is definitely that nausea moment uh, in episode one, where Friend first comes up on the glider and looks exactly like Meeve. Um, and then she's um, uh, chased by characters from Nadia of the Secret of Blue Water. And that was when I realized what this show was. Um, uh, for those who don't know, by the way, uh, and didn't watch my other video on this, uh, Fractal was conceived by a guy who was uh, quite um, critical of the way otaku fandom has been evolving recently, um, which hints that he is more of an old school fan. So Fractal is very much ref referencing back to a lot of those, those old school, especially 90s and 80s um, uh, anime uh, cliches and archetypes. So when I saw all of these references to uh, classic anime series and movies, I realized, oh, okay, so Fractal is going to uh, evoke a lot of those tropes. And then we got the battle between the priestesses and the rebellion, which was not a direct callback to anything. It's a, a uh, distinctive scene within the series, which was impressive because up until this point, we'd seen this sort of high adventure uh, approach to, to the show, and suddenly folks start dying. And this is right, you know, there are innocents around. I mean, this is a really, really bad thing that happens. And it just starts up and it progresses. Um, and I appreciated um, that for the fact that they don't try to sugarcoat it. They, they, they try to point out the fact that this is happening in a, a real world with real people. And bad things happen. Indeed, we see the death of, of that henchman in that episode. Uh, and in that scene, in fact. And it suddenly hits you that, wow, yeah, bad things can happen here. And then later we get the unexpected attempted rape of Frin when the guy hits her over the head with the, uh, 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 the piece of wood. And then again, we get that telltale moment where she starts to struggle and then suddenly she gets those visions and she blacks out. 
and you realize it, it's her, it's the sexual abuse that's doing that to her. Um, and um, it, it's this horrible moment, um, A, for the out of the blue violence against Frin, and then realizing what the guy's about to do to her, and then realizing that she's suddenly you know, flatlined mentally, and nothing is gonna stop this. Uh, it's, it's a horrible moment. Um, I particularly like it because it highlights the, the horror of violence against women. Um, the fact that you know, guys can do this and they get away with it. And I also love that moment at the end with the video with the uh, younger friend, which I think is a callback to Cowboy Bebop, actually. Um, and where we see her as a schoolgirl. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing moment because suddenly all the characters are vulnerable. All the characters are just wondering what happened. And now we see this window back into that, that time. And we see that she was just this normal girl who was put into a terrible, terrible situation. Um, and you know, as sorry as we feel for um, everyone else, we feel so sorry for that girl who is now long gone. All right, let's talk about some of the characters here. Um, starting with Klain, who is quite passive, but kind um, and relatively thoughtful. He's an unusual character in some ways in that he's not a, um, uh, he's not a shonen hero who's constantly leaping in where angels fear to tread, nor is he the passive, hands-off, you know, they're gonna yell at me uh, protagonist of a visual novel, for example. Um, he's closer to that, certainly, than to an action hero. Um, but he remains conflicted throughout the entire series. He's been pulled into this, this story, and he's basically being asked to choose between technology and um, anti-technology, really. And he remains conflicted about that throughout the entire series. And again, I appreciate that, that they open up this question and then keep it open. Um, and the fact that he doesn't have a great answer for this, uh, even by the end of the show, I think is very real. And there's Frin. I disliked Frin for uh, a good chunk of the series. I wanted to know why she wasn't re revealing information about Fractal. Um, she was the typical writing mistake where you create a character who just doesn't want to uh, reveal information that would just help the story along. And then you realize why she doesn't want to talk about Fractal. You know, Fractal represents to her horrible sexual abuse. You know, she's been abused by this priest for so long. And she kind of knows where all this is going with Fractal. And it's embarrassing. It's, it's something she doesn't want to talk about. Of course she doesn't. And she's not supposed to talk about it either. So you suddenly understand where she's coming from. She's not just um, being difficult. This is a very personal thing for her. Let's talk about Nessa. Um, Nessa could have been very annoying and much less annoying than I, I thought she would be. She's young and vivacious and full of energy. And I think it's, it's that place in the plot where she is meant to be the, um, the youthful vivaciousness that Fryn lacks, um, that really um, um, rescues the character from just being a bouncy, lowly character to being um, a, a counterpoint to another character explicitly. Also, did you notice how at the very end, um, Frin's personality is basically Frin plus Nessa. It's basically a combination of those two characters is her true personality. I thought it was quite nice. Now let's talk about some plot twists that uh, really uh, surprised me. And the first one was um, the re revelation that uh, Frin and Nessa are clones. Uh, because it introduces a new level of technology into the series that um, raises the stakes and really changes your relationship to these characters. You, know, you wonder, okay, um, are they all the same? Um, you quickly realize they're not, but then, okay, can we just replace any of these girls? Um, um, and moreover, if they have access to cloning technology, what else can these, um, uh, uh, the priests and priestesses of Fractal, what else can they do? Um, again, it raises the stakes in an interesting way. I also was blown away by that moment when the priest is holding a friend and she's all you know scrunched up and he's holding her and you suddenly realize through his dialogue what he's been doing to her and suddenly i i was totally creeped out i was horrified um and it's all there in the body language between between the two of them it's perfectly presented um and a, a creepy moment and a horrifying moment 
So those are some of the things I uh, particularly was impressed by in Fractal. Uh, I'm sure you'll find others that you'll put in the comments there or tell me why I'm just wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, so those are some thoughts on Fractal. Thanks for watching. See you next time.